Hi, it's Fiona Masterson from the Learning Reservoir. In this short video, I'm going to explain to you what 21 CFR 820 is. 21 CFR 820 is also known as the Quality System Regulation, or abbreviated to QSR. It is a set of regulations that are established by the FDA under the authority of the Federal Drug and Cosmetic Act. And what are the purpose of these regulations? Well, they are to ensure that medical devices are manufactured in a way that meets quality and safety standards. It establishes a set of requirements that manufacturers must follow that cover design, production, testing and distribution of the medical devices. And the whole objective is by implementing the QSR that you're ensuring the safety and effectiveness of your device. It is uh, very important that companies understand that if you are manufacturing, distributing or importing medical devices into the US, you have to comply with the quality system regulation. The FDA will monitor you and your compliance. And if you're found to be non-compliant, um, that will lead to regulatory actions, including warning letters, um, fines, or even product recalls. So you, so you have to understand the requirements of the QSR. What does it look like? Well, here's the table of contents. It's freely available on the FDA's website. Um, you don't have to purchase it like you do, say, for example, an ISO standard. So at the top we, we see here, it's called, the, as I said, the Quality System Regulation, the QSR. And it's broken into subparts. So there are 15 subparts in the QSR. So let's have a look at each one of these subparts. The first one is subpart A, which is general provisions. This is setting out the scope of the regulation. It's going through some definitions that you should know about and uh, discussing the framework for a quality system uh, for a medical device facility. Subpart B covers quality system requirements. Here we're talking about management responsibility. As we know, management is key uh, to ensuring that you have an effective quality management system. You need total buy-in buy from management if you want to achieve that. It also covers quality audits and it covers personnel uh, in subpart B. Subpart C covers design control. So if you're involved in designing a medical device, you need to be compliant with subpart C. Subpart D covers document controls. In any quality management system, you're going to produce lots and lots of documents and these have to be controlled and that is covered under subpart D. Subpart E covers purchasing controls. When you are manufacturing a medical device, you are going to be buying in components. They have to be of high quality. That is so, so important. Are you choosing your uh, correct suppliers for your, um, your components who are manufacturing them and so on? This is all covered under subpart A, purchasing controls. Subpart F covers identification and traceability. This is critical. We need to be able to track the medical devices when they go out into the field. We need to be able to identify them. Uh, we need to have full traceability if we have to do a product recall, we want to be able to do a recall effectively and efficiently. And that's all con covered under subpart F. Subpart G looks at production and process control. So controlling your process, you want your process to be under control in your quality management system and out of control a process means you're going to have potential quality issues and you don't want that. So that is why we have subpart G here, production and process control. Subpart H is acceptance activities. How do we know when a, a medical device is acceptable, that it passes quality tests? What, are, what is the acceptable result? What is not? And so on. What in-process testing should be conducted? All of those things are covered under subpart H. Subpart I covers non-conforming product. You're going to have a non-conforming product. That, that's just the, the way uh, that happens in business and when you're manufacturing a medical device. There's a lot of variables in involved and there are often non-conforming product but it ha they have to be controlled you don't want them getting out into the field so how do you control your non-conforming product the requirements for that is covered under subpart i subpart j looks at corrective preventative action if something does go wrong you need wrong you need to investigate it how do you do that well you should do it in a structured manner and the requirements for that are under subpart j corrective and preventive action so part K outlines the requirements for labeling and packaging controls. We want to have our devices labeled correctly. We want them packaged correctly. And those requirements are covered under subpart K. Subpart L covers handling, storage, distribution, and installation of your devices. 
You want your devices to be handled correctly, stored correctly, sent out to the, to the patients or, or the hospitals correctly and installed correctly. It's critical that these important parts of this life cycle of medical device are controlled and the requirements for that are found in subpart L. Subpart M covers records. You will again produce lots and lots of records for the quality management system. You, you might need to produce them if there's a product recall. You need to show them as evidence of uh, things you've done when you're being audited and so on. So you need to control all those records that are produced and the requirements for that are found in subpart M. Subpart N look covers servicing. So if you have uh, produced a medical device, it has to be serviced. Well, there are requirements for that and they're found in subpart N. And if you use statistics in your processes, which is highly likely because we're dealing with manufacturing situations, well, what are the statistical techniques you're using? Why have you chosen those particular methods and so on? requirements for that are outlined in subpart O. And that is a, a whirlwind tour of 21 CFR A20. I hope it gives you an understanding of the structure and the content of this particular regulation. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like some more information uh, about 21 CFR A20 and how to implement it and, and so on, please reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to help you with it here at the Learning Reservoir. If you like this video, please give us a like and, and subscribe to our channel to get uh, notifications on similar videos.